Shaw's algorithm, named after mathematician Peter Shaw, is a quantum algorithm for integer factorization formulated in 1994. Informally it solves the following problem. Given an integer n, find its prime factors. On a quantum computer, to factor an integer n, Shaw's algorithm runs in polynomial time. Specifically it takes quantum gates of order O2, using fast multiplication, demonstrating that the integer factorization problem can be efficiently solved on a quantum computer and is thus in the complexity class BQP. This is substantially faster than the most efficient known classical factoring algorithm, the general number field SIV, which works in sub-exponential time, about O1 third 2 thirds. The efficiency of Shaw's algorithm is due to the efficiency of the quantum Fourier transform and modular exponentiation by repeated squarings. If a quantum computer with a sufficient number of qubits could operate without succumbing to noise and other quantum decoherence phenomena, Shaw's algorithm could be used to break public key cryptography schemes such as the widely used RSA scheme. RSA is based on the assumption that factoring large numbers is computationally intractable. So far as is known, this assumption is valid for classical computers. No classical algorithm is known that can factor in polynomial time. However, Shaw's algorithm shows that factoring is efficient on an ideal quantum computer, so it may be feasible to defeat RSA by constructing a large quantum computer. It was also a powerful motivator for the design and construction of quantum computers and for the study of new quantum computer algorithms. It has also facilitated research on new crypto systems that are secure from quantum computers, collectively called post-quantum cryptography. In 2001, Shaw's algorithm was demonstrated by a group at IBM, who factored 15 into 3 times 5. Using an NMIA implementation of a quantum computer with 7 qubits. After IBM's implementation, two independent groups, one at the University of Science and Technology of China, and the other one at the University of Queensland, have implemented Shaw's algorithm using photonic qubits. Emphasizing that multi qubit entanglement was observed when running the Shaw's algorithm circuits. In 2012, the factorization of 15 was repeated. Also in 2012, the factorization of 21 was achieved, setting the record for the largest number factored with a quantum computer. In April 2012, the factorization of 143 was achieved, although this used adiabatic quantum computation rather than Shaw's algorithm. It was discovered in November 2014 that this adiabatic quantum computation in 2012 had in fact also factored larger numbers the largest being 56,153, which is currently the record for the largest integer factored on a quantum device. Procedure The problem we are trying to solve is, given an odd composite number, find an integer, strictly between and that divides. We are interested in odd values of because any even value of trivially has the number as a prime factor. We can use a primality testing algorithm to make sure that is indeed composite. Moreover, for the algorithm to work, we need not to be the power of a prime. This can be tested by checking that is not an integer, for all. Since is not a power of a prime, it is the product of two coprime numbers greater than. As a consequence of the Chinese remainder theorem, the number has at least four distinct square roots modulo, two of them being then. The aim of the algorithm is to find a square root of one other factor, such a will lead to a factorization of, as in other factoring algorithms like the quadratic sieve. In turn, finding such a is reduced to finding an element of even period with a certain additional property. The quantum algorithm is used for finding the period of randomly chosen elements, as order finding is a hard problem on a classical computer. Shaw's algorithm consists of two parts. A reduction, which can be done on a classical computer, of the factoring problem to the problem of order finding. A quantum algorithm to solve the order finding problem. Classical part, pick a random number a less than n. 
compute GCD. This may be done using the Euclidean algorithm. If GCD1, then it is a non-trivial factor of n, so we are done. Otherwise, use the period finding subroutine to find r, the period of the following function, i.e., the order of in, which is the smallest positive integer r for which or, if r is odd, go back to step 1. If a r, 2 minus 1, go back to step 1. GCD and GCD are both non-trivial factors of n. We are done. For example, where, and, quantum part. Period finding subroutine The quantum circuits used for this algorithm are custom designed for each choice of n and each choice of the random a used. In f equals ax mod n. Given n, find q equals 2q such that, which implies, the input and output q but registers need to hold superpositions of values from 0 to q minus 1, and so have q qubits each. Using what might appear to be twice as many qubits as necessary guarantees that there are at least n different texts which produce the same f, even as the period r approaches n, 2. Proceed as follows. Initialize the registers to where x runs from 0 to q minus 1. This initial state is a superposition of q states. Construct f as a quantum function and apply it to the above state. To obtain this is still a superposition of q states. Apply the quantum Fourier transform to the input register. This transform uses a QTH root of unity such as to distribute the amplitude of any given state equally among all Q of the states, and to do so in a different way for each different x. Let y be one of the r possible integers modulo n such that here q is an integer, then this leads to the final state. Now we reorder this sum as this is a superposition of many more than q states, but many fewer than q2 states, since there are fewer than q distinct values of, let be a qth root of unity, r be the period of f, x0 be the smallest of the x which have f equals z, and b index is these x, running from 0 to so that then is a unit vector in the complex plane. And the coefficient of in the final state is each term in this sum represents a different path to the same result. And quantum interference occurs, constructive when the unit vectors point in nearly the same direction in the complex plane, which requires that point along the positive real axis. Perform a measurement. We obtain some outcome y in the input register and z in the output register. Since f is periodic, the probability of measuring some pair y and z is given by analysis now shows that this probability is higher the closer the unit vector is to the positive real axis, or the closer year q is to an integer. Unless r is a power of 2, it won't be a factor of q. Since it's close to some integer c, the known value y, q is close to the unknown value c, r. Performing classical continued fraction expansion on y, q allows us to find approximations d per second of it which satisfy two conditions, a, s less than n b, y, q, d per second less than one half q. Given these conditions, s is very likely to be the appropriate period r, or at least a factor of it. Check, classically, if if so, we are done. Otherwise, classically, obtain more candidates for R by using multiples of S, or by using other S with deep per second near Y, Q. If any candidate works, we are done. Otherwise, try again starting from step 1 of this subroutine. Explanation of the algorithm. The algorithm is composed of two parts. The second part finds the period using the quantum Fourier transform, and is responsible for the quantum speedup, obtaining factors from period the integers less than n and co-prime with n form a finite abelian group under multiplication modulo n. The size is given by Euler's totient function. By the end of step 3, we have an integer in this group. Since the group is finite, and must have a finite order i, the smallest positive integer such that therefore, n divides a r minus 1. 
Suppose we are able to obtain i, and it is even. Now is the square root of 1 modulo, different from 1. This is because is the order of modulo, so, else, the order of in this group would be. If by step 6 we have to restart the algorithm with a different random number, eventually, we must hit an of order in, such that. This is because such a is a square root of 1 modulo, other than 1 and whose existence is guaranteed by the Chinese remainder theorem. Since is not a prime power, we claim that is a proper factor of, that is, in fact if, then divides, so that, against the construction of, if on the other hand, then by bears outside entity there are integers such that, multiplying both sides by we obtain, since divides, we obtain that divides, so that, again contradicting the construction of, thus is the required proper factor of, finding the period Shaw's period finding algorithm relies heavily on the ability of a quantum computer to be in many states simultaneously. Physicists call this behavior a superposition of states. To compute the period of a function f, we evaluate the function at all points simultaneously. Quantum physics does not allow us to access all this information directly, though. A measurement will yield only one of all possible values, destroying all others. If not for the no-cloning theorem, we could first measure f without measuring x, and then make a few copies of the resulting state. Measuring x on these states would provide different text values which give the same f, leading to the period. Because we cannot make exact copies of a quantum state, this method does not work. Therefore, we have to carefully transform the superposition to another state that will return the correct answer with high probability. This is achieved by the quantum Fourier transform. Shaw thus had to solve three implementation problems. All of them had to be implemented fast, which means that they can be implemented with a number of quantum gates that is polynomial in. Create a superposition of states. This can be done by applying Hadamard gates to all qubits in the input register. Another approach would be to use the quantum Fourier transform. Implement the function f as a quantum transform. To achieve this, Shaw used repeated squaring for his modular exponentiation transformation. It is important to note that this step is more difficult to implement than the quantum Fourier transform, in that it requires ancillary qubits and substantially more gates to accomplish. Perform a quantum Fourier transform. By using controlled rotation gates and Hadamard gates, Shaw designed a circuit for the quantum Fourier transform that uses just gates. After all these transformations a measurement will yield an approximation to the period R. For simplicity assume that there is a y such that here q is an integer, then the probability to measure y is 1. To see that we notice that then for all integers b, therefore, the sum whose square gives us the probability to measure y will be q, r since b takes roughly q, r values and thus the probability is. There are r y such that here q is an integer and also r possibilities for, so the probabilities sum to 1. Note, another way to explain Shaw's algorithm is by noting that it is just the quantum phase estimation algorithm in disguise. The bottleneck, the runtime bottleneck of Shaw's algorithm is quantum modular exponentiation, which is by far slower than the quantum Fourier transform and classical pre-post-processing. There are several approaches to constructing and optimizing circuits for modular exponentiation. The simplest and most practical approach is to mimic conventional arithmetic circuits with reversible gates, starting with ripple carry adders. Knowing the base and the modulus of exponentiation facilitates further optimizations. Reversible circuits typically use on the order of gates for qubits. Alternative techniques asymptotically improve gate counts by using quantum Fourier transforms, but are not competitive with less than 600 qubits due to high constants. Discrete logarithms Given prime with generator where, suppose we know that, for some r, and we wish to compute r, which is the discrete logarithm, 
Consider the abelian group where each factor corresponds to modular multiplication of non-zero values, assuming p is prime. Now, consider the function this gives us an abelian hidden subgroup problem, as f corresponds to a group homomorphism. The kernel corresponds to modular multiples of, so, if we can find the kernel, we can find r. In popular culture, on the television show Stargate Universe, the lead scientist, Dr. Nicholas Rush, hoped to use Shaw's algorithm to crack Destiny's master code. He taught a quantum cryptography class at the University of California, Berkeley, in which Shaw's algorithm was studied. Shaw's algorithm was also a correct answer to a question in a physics bowl competition in the episode The Bat-Jar Conjecture of the TV series The Big Bang Theory.